Recall that we could easily extend the definition of differentiability for functions f from r to r to definition of differentiability for functions f from r to rm. The basic idea was that such a function is differentiable if and only if each component function is differentiable. For the same reason, once we have differentiability of functions f from rn to r, we can easily extend it to differentiability of functions f from rn to rm. Once again, the basic idea is that each component function should be differentiable. Let us recall what we mean by component functions. First of all, we defined m functions from rm to r defined as pi i of x1, x2, x3, etc. up to xm is equal to xi. So pi 1 takes x1, x2, x3, etc. up to xm to x1, pi 2 takes it to x2, pi 3 takes it to x3 and so on. In this fashion, we obtain m functions. As soon as we have these m functions, given a function f from rn to rm, I can look at pi i composed with f. Notice that this will be a function from rn to r. And these functions will be called the component functions of f. And we can express f of x1, x2, x3, etc. up to xn in terms of these component functions. More precisely, the definition tells us that f of x1, x2, etc. up to xn is equal to f1 of x1, x2, x3, etc. up to xn, comma f2 of x1, x2, etc. up to xn, and so on up to fm of x1, x2, x3, etc. up to xn. And this is the reason why they are called component functions. Using analogy, we were able to define a notion of differentiability for functions f from rn to rm. More precisely, we were saying that f is differentiable if and only if fi is differentiable for all i. If and only if this happens, we say that f is differentiable. This was the candidate definition that we had in mind and for this we used the analogy of what we did when we moved from functions f from r to r to functions f from r to rm. Now ideally we would like to express differentiability of f in terms of a single limit. So what we need to now explore is can we express this information as a single limit. If we can, then that should be the definition of a derivative. To capture the information fi is differentiable for all i, let us first recall what we mean when we say fi is differentiable at a point c. We mean there exists some vector, let's call this vector ai, such that limit h tends to 0 fi of c plus h minus fi of c minus ai dot h whole divided by norm h is equal to 0. And we are saying that this holds for all i's. So in other words, from what we know about limits, we can rewrite this as limit h tends to 0, f1 of c plus h minus f1 of c minus a1 dot h whole divided by norm h comma f2 of c plus h minus f2 of c minus a2 dot h whole divided by norm h etc up to fm of c plus h minus fm of c minus am dot h whole divided by norm h is equal to the zero vector. In other words, it's equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. In other words, this means that there exists m vectors a1, a2, etc. up to am such that this holds. 
So now let us try to see if we can simplify this further. That's the next step. But notice that I can express this in the following manner. I can first of all take norm h outside. So if I take norm h outside, I can write this as limit h tends to 0, 1 by norm h into something. But what is that something? Let's try to write this. It can be written as f1 of c plus h comma f2 of c plus h etc up to fm of c plus h minus f1 of c comma f2 of c etc up to fm of c minus a1 dot h comma a2 dot h etc up to a m dot h and we are saying that this limit is the zero vector that's what we are trying to say and i hope you understand how we went from this to this we took the norm h outside and wrote it here then we collected f1 of c plus h, f2 of c plus h, etc. up to fm of c plus h, that is one vector. Then we collected f1 of c, f2 of c, etc. up to fm of c, that's another. And then a1 dot h, a2 dot h, etc. So we just collected these three separately and we wrote it in this form. That's what we did. And as soon as we do this, notice something. This is equal to f of c plus h and this is equal to f of c so in other words we can rewrite this as limit h tends to 0 1 by norm h into f of c plus h minus f of c minus a1 dot h comma a2 dot h etc up to a m dot h is equal to 0 Recall that we had already seen that this is the form of a general linear map acting on the vector h. As this concept is very crucial, let us go through this idea once more. Recall that given a linear map L from Rn to Rm, I can associate a matrix to it, which means there exists a matrix A which is given by a11, a12, etc. up to a1n. In general, the ith row looks like ai1, ai2, etc. up to ain, and so on up to am1, am2, etc. up to amn, such that L of h is equal to a times h. There are some things to notice here. First of all, notice that I am writing H as a column matrix. And as H belongs to Rn, it should have N entries. That means H is an N cross 1 matrix. And A we know is an M cross N matrix. So the product of these two matrices will be an M cross 1 matrix which is an element in Rm written in a column form. Further notice that this or more precisely A11 etc. up to A1n is an element in Rn. So let us call this A1. Similarly, we notice that this is a vector in Rn and we denote it by Ai and so on. This is Am. And once we have these notations, it's easy to see that AH is equal to A1 dot H comma A2 dot H etc. up to AM dot H. In other words, the existence of M vectors A1, A2 etc. up to AM is equivalent to existence of a matrix A. And as soon as we have this, we can summarize what we have seen so far in the following language. We can say that a function f from Rn to Rm is differentiable at a point C if and only if there exists a matrix A such that limit h tends to 0 
f of c plus h minus f of c minus a h whole divided by norm h is the zero vector. Sometimes it might also be stated in a slightly different language. It might be stated as if and only if there exists a linear map L such that limit h tends to 0 f of c plus h minus f of c minus L of h whole divided by norm h is equal to 0. Let us stress this A is a matrix. It's an M cross N matrix and L is a linear map from Rn to Rm. Now these are definitions of differentiability that's very similar to what we have seen so far. In fact, it's common practice to take these as definitions of differentiability and prove that this implies the component functions are differentiable. So you can go either way. 